it is so good to visually see you. <laughs> you look great. How are you doing? Because we haven't talked since I think uh what the last Juno Awards in was it no, not London. Where was it? London. It was, it was London 2019. The red carpet the one with us last time we talked. That is amazing to me. And you know what? It's so funny, Rudy, because I have had so many conversations with people since just articulating how grateful I am that for my first official Juno's red carpet experience, I got to be there in the flesh, you know, something that we never would have imagined we might take for granted. Like, of course, we would always be together to celebrate the Juno Awards, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why would we ever be doing this virtually? I can't think of any world in which that would need to happen. It's crazy. I would never have thought in a million years that we would do this, but at least we have the technology of today to do it. So really, uh, what do I say? Congratulations again on another Juno nomination. I mean, Thank you already you. know what it's like to win. I know, I know. I and And the shock of it all. But I'll say, Rudy, that I still... You know, I still, I don't ever expect to be nominated. It's always a real surprise when and if I am. And I mean, really when I won in 2019, you, you really could have knocked me over with a feather because <laughs> I, I didn't expect it at all. I don't know if you and I have ever had this conversation, but I didn't have anything written. I had nothing prepared in terms of thank yous. I was like, I'm in the same category as Holly Cole. Diana Krall, um, Diana Panton, and I was actually nominated um, with Jody Prosnick, and I'm a huge fan of hers, and, and I thought that music was really compelling. So I just, you know, I was like, well, maybe I'll come in fifth. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. You got, it's funny, while you were talking, I was kind of, I'm listening, I'm looking in the background going, where is that Juno? Where did she put oh, that Juno? Where yeah, you know it? what? It's, so you can see my, um, my uh, uh, National Jazz Awards and my Sokan Award right in the yeah. background there. The Juno is just a little bit forward. I don't want to leave you. I can bring it. You want me to go get it? Yeah, go ahead. Go grab it. <laughs> okay. You know. Okay. Oh, so she's, hold uh, on. Now I have to untangle my. Yeah, no problem. I'm just going to. Okay. I'm going to do commentary. Okay. So she just took off her headphones. She's walking to the back. There. Oh, there's no way we could have seen that. Okay. All now right, she's I sitting plug it in again. She's going to plug in again. There we go. There's uh, Juno. And let me and tell you, Rudy, this Juno is so heavy. It's so heavy. I mean, it's it's like a <laughs> blunt, a heavy, blunt object, and it there needs it to be dusted. <laughs> there was no way. We could not have seen it from the screen setup that you have. There was yeah. no way we could have seen it. So I'm, could you show it up one more time? Yes. I mean, that's your baby. Look that's my that. baby. Wow. She's a beauty. I should take better care of her. Um, but, uh, you know, it's one of those funny things where you display it proudly, but mm -hmm. you also just try and stay humble about awards and, and uh, you know, why it is that we do what we do because the awards are amazing when they come, but it's not why we create music, right? True. Yeah. Very true. Um, you know, you talk about being surprised again, getting another nomination. What's this one? Not, what's this nomination for and for what album? It's for my album, Out of Dust, which was released right at the beginning of the pandemic, March 27th of 2020. Wow. And, you know, I, my team, they, they were understandably a little bit concerned and uh, suggested that I might delay release. But I just, you know, the songs are about coming out of, you know, a place of real darkness and struggle. And, uh, and I had the feeling that a lot of us were going to be in that place in the coming months. I had no idea how long, but my sense was that this music could actually have new relevance if I were willing to release it, even though it was terrible timing from a business perspective. Okay, so let's talk about this. So, you know, we hear about this pandemic in other parts of the world. You're getting this album prepared. I'm assuming that once you have an album prepared, we're talking tour, we're talking... Uh, media tour we're talking all of these different things so now as we come up to in march 
because in March really was when things shut down because I had flown to the Juno Awards in Saskatoon. <laughs> Literally got I was off on the my plane. way. There you go. Booked a ticket and flew back. Okay. So what happens then with you throughout 2020 when you find out that literally the world and literally the world shut down? Oh, one foot in front of the other mm. and a lot of crying <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of regrouping. Like my husband and I, so Ben co-produced the album. He's a musician. He's a drummer and engineer. He has been my right hand man through this pandemic because he's enabled me to broadcast live streams from this piano and, uh, cool. you know, and has helped set me up with good sound and everything. But, you know, I think in a way, some of the most memorable moments were just when we would sit down and take stock and maybe after a good cry, we would just go, you know what? We still have our health. We still have our lives. We're still musicians. I have so many friends, Rudy, who have changed professions. I get a little uh, verklempt just, you know, thinking about that because mm -hmm. these were people who had dedicated decades of their lives to music. And it is so hard to stay afloat, add to the mix of a global pandemic, and it's all but impossible. So I have friends who just said, the writings on the wall, I've got to switch gears, um, a function of necessity. But Ben and I would say, okay, we need to be thankful that we're still able to make music. Let's be thankful that that our 10 year old son hasn't lost his mind. I mean, I can't imagine what this has been like for kids, um, just stuck at home and, and not with their peers. You know, he is back at school right now, but that could be short lived, you know, they were back for a couple of months in the fall and then home for a few months and now back we're hoping for the remainder of the year but anyway so you know and i would say the thing that i missed the most rudy um was touring i mean i'm somebody who is on the road a lot of days out of the year even as a mom and the silver lining of pandemic has been all this time with my family but i thrive on the road you know, the road is my home away from home. And it is where the music that we write by ourselves um, connects with everybody else, right? Um, I mean, it happens on in recorded format, but there's nothing like a live show to see how the work that you've painstakingly created can potentially touch people's lives. And that's where the meaning comes in, for me at least. So how did you adjust to doing virtual performances, especially when you can't see anybody? Because I think that's one of the big things that we've all come in realization. Um, yeah, it, it's great when you can be home to watch a show, but there's nothing like the energy being at a venue, artists, fans, the connection, it's there. It, they are the audience and the venue you're in with that audience. They are another member of the band. So, you know, in jazz, especially where the music, you don't know what's going to happen on a given night. Um, spontaneity and improvisation are such key components of the, the, um, the genre. And so, you know, the space you would find yourselves in at a given show and the way the audience was responding. And it's so different in, you know, across in different cities across Canada, but also around the world, the way that audiences show their appreciation or engage with the music, it's really different. And that kind of keeps us on our toes and it informs what happens on stage. And so you just don't get that input during a live stream. I mean, thank God for the little emojis that pop up and the clap emojis. And you will see, depending on how you're set up, you know, you might see the odd comment. And in that sense, I actually much prefer live streams to pre-recorded shows that just get premiered, you know, at a certain time. But at the same time with live streams, it's on you, the performer to wrangle the technology, to contend with Wi-Fi, to make sure the lighting is okay, the sound, 
you know, and those are things that frankly, we shouldn't have to worry about mm -hmm. as musicians. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know exactly what you're saying. Oh, and, 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 and they, they felt like barriers, you know, and they still do to this day, if I'm honest, I know a lot of people have made their peace with live streaming and are even thriving with the whole live stream format, but I cannot wait to get back on stage. <laughs> and there's nothing like being live because you don't know what's going to happen when you're with an audience and things can turn completely around and special yeah. things happen. Yep. And yeah, just crossing fingers, we can get back to that. So you've got your album, you're, you, you're doing virtual performances. Um, was there ever a point though, where you were just like, what you mentioned about your other colleagues who were like, I can't do this. Was there ever a point where you kind of just sort of sat there to yourself and said, maybe this is it? Yeah, not, not, okay, maybe it's time to throw in the towel. More so, how am I ever going to get back on the wagon, the proverbial wagon and the like literal wagon, if you think of a bus or a, a tour bus or a plane or a train as a wagon, you know, getting you from point A to point B. Touring is exhausting. I turned 40 in October and so many, oh, thank you. Prior to pandemic, you know, if I'm honest, things were really beginning to take off for me slowly, but surely it was like I was kind of moving up to the next level in Europe. Um, there was this beautiful partnership between Germany and Canada in 2020 that was going to yield all sorts of opportunities. I was on a double bill with Tanya Takak, you know, um, uh, headlining at, at Jazz Ahead, the biggest jazz conference in the world. And, and it was like pandemic just, you know, totally pulled the rug out from under me. And there were so many days where I would turn to Ben, who I was stuck at home with, and say, how am I ever going to find the energy and drive to get back on that track? Because it's almost like there's an inertia when you've been doing it for decades. People are like, how do you do this? Because it is so much work and it is tireless. But once you're in it, once you're on that hamster wheel, <laughs> there's an inertia. But because I got totally thrown off the hamster wheel for better and for worse, I couldn't imagine ever getting back on. But I'm slowly finding my strength and I think I will find my touring legs once more. And I hope I have the opportunity to, I'm sure I will. My, my agents have kind of been coming back and emailing and saying, okay, you know, are you getting vaccinated? Uh, what does 2022 look like? So hopefully things will really pick up again. Um, so in a lot of ways, then this nomination is really special because to be at that down point, to be at this point, like that's night and day. Rudy, uh, I, I mean, it was such a gift to get the nomination because the other thing is that, you know, people were telling me that the music was meaningful for them, but because the media support just completely fell away when it was most critical at the outset of the release, I felt a little bit like the album was that tree that falls in the woods, no one's around to witness it. And even though my fans and listeners and community were responding, the great, it was just, it was like it got cut short at the knees, the release. And, and so, you know, fast forward almost a year to get that industry nod. It was like, oh, people, people did pay attention. That's, that's amazing to me because I wasn't sure, you know, when we were in the thick of it. Speaking of nods, have we heard from our school Humber college that we both have graduated from, have we heard from Humber College about this? Yes, do you mean about the Junos? Yes. Yes, so they were, oh, I wish I could get it. It's somewhere amidst the rubble, but um, within a couple of days, a card from the alumni, ah. Humber alumni showed up at my house and, you know, just with best wishes and Humber is, I just feel like it's the gift that keeps on giving, you know? I went to Humber in 1998 thinking, gosh, this is like a little, this is the little, the baby brother or baby sister to U of T, the more serious music programs. But actually it ended up being the most amazing 
environment in which to cut my teeth. And now as a graduate, oh my gosh, I mean, I'm, how many years has it been? It's been a long time, 17 years. <laughs> I, I just, it's like, I still feel totally grafted into this beautiful family. And I have the feeling it'll be that way for us for decades to come. Right, Rudy? It definitely does. And just for folks who are wondering, I'm 1985, so I'm way older. You look so me. young. Oh, how is it possible? You. It's definitely possible. Trust me, the gray in the beard, it's, it's definitely possible. So what are the plans then for 2021 going into 2022? Do we have virtual performances set up? Do we have new music coming out? What's the plan? Yeah. So, um, you know, we've been asked to do a number of pre-recorded things. Some people are still, you know, venturing into the live stream world, but I, I think a lot of folks, especially when they want to bring together various artists, they've asked for a pre-recorded song. And so I, uh, we've got something that'll come out for International Jazz Day on April 30th. Nice. With uh, Bravo Niagara. And um, the, the series is called Sing for Freedom, which is, I think, amazing and very much of the moment. And, uh, and then I get to actually perform for the, um, I, what do they call it, In Memoriam segment, where for the Canadian Journalism Association Awards, um, which is a big deal for me and a totally different kind of sphere, you know, I was invited to be the musical guest to play a song while they're paying tribute to the lives lost in journalism uh, here in Canada over the past uh, year or so. And that's coming up in June. So that's really special. And then on the album front, I have two ideas that I might kind of marry on a double release or something. Um, one is obviously you know, directly a product of pandemic life, which is my husband and I producing a duo album, duo album entirely from within our home. We've never done that before, never thought we could or would or would want to, but now we're very curious about what that music might sound like. And then on the flip side, um, I really want to make an album with a symphony orchestra, <laughs> which would represent the kind of antithesis to pandemic lockdown life right like yeah. people, a large group but i've always wanted to make a, a large scale record um and uh and so i thought well wouldn't it be an interesting juxtaposition to have both together so we'll see i don't know when that symphony record could ever become a reality you um, talked about this a couple of years ago in one of our interviews it just hit me like lightning going wait a minute i've heard you talk about this before yeah yeah, so I mean, House of Many Rooms, which was more kind of a pop-ish record, yeah, yeah. that did have a chamber orchestra. But when I say symphony orchestra, I mean like forty bodies. <laughs> yeah, no, you mentioned that. So wow, I yeah. can't wait to hear and hopefully see this too. No, you know, it sounds like you've just been able to keep on that path, no matter what has been going on in this world. Uh, what advice can you give folks who are, you know? still muttering through this and still trying to figure out and hopefully have that beautiful smile like you have uh, on their faces. Well, I'm still muddling through and that's the truth of it. And so I actually think it's really important that we give ourselves perm permission to muddle through, permission to catch our breath, permission to not be productive if that's what we need to heal. And to know that as cliche as it sounds, Rudy, this too will pass and i know that the world feels unrecognizable still and we don't know if it'll ever return to what it once was but in some ways i would almost say hopefully it won't and the new world we find ourselves in post pandemic will actually be for the better a world in which we perhaps respect our environment more a world in which we give ourselves permission and room to breathe a world where we value hunkering down with our loved ones you know, and, and see that as a gift, um, the gift that it is. Uh, yeah. So that would be, that's my commentary. <laughs> there we go. Social media, where do we go to follow you to find out everything that's happening and what you're going to be doing? Because we still don't know yet about what your participation may be with the Juno since it's happening yes. in Toronto. So I do. Do we know yet, or don't? Yeah. We know? So I'm going to be ah. hosting the the Juno Jazz Showcase, 
I think I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. Well, if you're not, we've already got it and I'm not erasing (laughs) it. So fantastic. (laughs) Yeah. So that's really fun. And um, again, I don't want to give away um, their plans. Yes, you can. But, (laughs) but, uh, you know, Karis isn't paying attention. Go ahead. Right, right. So I think it's the 50th anniversary for the Junos. And I, I really, my heart goes out to them because wouldn't they have loved to just do something so incredible and large scale? But you know what, they're doing what they can. Um, and I think they are going to, there's going to be some really special and creative virtual content, not unlike the Junos. Uh, I mean, they, you know, the Junos, oh gosh, when did it happen? It was last June, right? I think the virtual Junos. Yes. Yeah. Um, they were wonderful. And again, you know, what they could sort of scramble and, and put together virtually on very short order. This year, I think will be quite spectacular, um, even though much of it will be handled virtually. Um, and so, yeah, that's happening in May. Fantastic. And uh, I don't really know much more than just my role as the Juno Jazz Showcase host. And that's more me wearing my radio hat with CBC Music. Great. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So social media, where do we go then to follow to see oh. and find out more information that's going to be happening? Thank you. So um, you can find me on Instagram at Lila Bialy, L-A-I-L-A-B-I-A-L-I. My website, Facebook is uh, Lila Bialy Music. I have a, an artist page there. Um, and on YouTube, of course, again, uh, Lila Bialy, just search my name. And uh I've just joined TikTok. Uh oh. <laughs> which is not for the faint of heart. I feel way too old to be on TikTok, frankly. Are you but... going to be dancing on TikTok like the rest of them? Okay, there we go. We just got our TikTok. Yep. That's the debut. <laughs> you know what you can My... do? You can dance with your Juno Award. Oh, that would be. Yeah, you know what's so funny? What's so that? I joined TikTok the day that they announced this year's nominees. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't holding my award, but I was like, yay, I got nominated. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It sounds like so many great things are going to be happening in your future. So I just have to say thank you so much for this interview. But oh, more thanks, importantly, please. thank you so much for the other interviews. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for the music. Thank you for everything that you're doing to help keep this world as positive as possible. You are definitely one of the bright lights of 2021. That's so kind, Rudy. And likewise, and thank you so much for including me with and in, in bringing me into your world. And uh, I know we intersect through Humber um, and the music industry in general, but you too are a bright light. And uh, I love that we can do this virtually. Fantastic. Thank you again. We'll definitely talk soon. Bye.